Today I have a question for you. What is money? Yes, money. Welcome to I Believe TV, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques the media and government use to keep you in the dark. My name is Justin Ballett and today I'm going to be speaking about money. So what exactly is money? Well, it depends on what level of reality your understanding is. You see, there's three different levels of reality. Most people only know about one level of reality, and that's the lowest level of reality, which is called the believing level. Most people are born into the believing level of reality, where they simply believe what they are told. They believe what the media tells them, what the government tells them, what experts tell them, what uh, schools tell them, what universities tell them. And if you ask most people what do they believe money is, they will tell you that money is something that you work for and it enables you to buy things. And the more money you have, the more freedom that you have. So money is technically freedom to the lowest levels of reality, the believers. Money is there to give you freedom in some form or another. Because the more you have, the more free you can become. Now there are other levels of reality. And the next level up is the reality where people think. And they start to use money as a tool, as opposed to merely being a thing that you work for, to give you freedom so that you can buy things, money becomes a tool. It can also be used as a weapon. So instead of now working for money, you use it as a tool. So if you want to buy yourself a house, you go to the bank and you borrow enough money to buy a hundred houses. You then sell 99 of those houses off at a slight profit so that your house is paid for. You buy 10,000 eggs, you sell most of them off so that you get free eggs. This is how you use money as a tool. Many people can understand that, but not many people are able to actually do that because you have to be taught how to use a tool properly. And that's why most people are poor because they don't understand how to use money as a tool. They don't understand that if you go to the bank and you say, can I borrow a million rand? I want to set up a business. As opposed to if I go to the bank and I say, I want to borrow a hundred billion rand and I want to destroy every other small business out there and take over the monopoly so I can charge whatever prices I want, I'm going to get the loan and you're not. Because I understand that money can be used as a tool and it can be used as a weapon. The highest level of reality is what I call the understanding level. These are the people who actually create money. Where did money come from? Money is not a natural thing. It's, it doesn't just uh, grow on trees or appear somewhere. It must have come from somewhere. Somebody must have created a thing called money. And money, we are told, was created to uh, help people barter with each other. It was a form of making trade easier. That's what we've been told about money. But there are people that actually created money. And these people who create money have a totally different view on what it is used for. To the people at the top, the understanding level, the creators of money, they understand that money is actually a form of slavery. And you down below who believe in it are all the slaves. And the way it works is very, very simple. If I was to print my own coins with my own face on that coin and I said this is now money for my little town where I live. If you want to come into my town, you're going to have to work for my money. Because to live inside my town, you have to pay rates and taxes. You have to pay for all these things that my town or my village, my city, my country provides. That's the whole point of having a town or a city or a country. It's that you get the people down below who come and work for you so that you can pay them your invention, which is called money. Now, money is, as I said, it's only what the people believe in. So money can be anything. It can be porcupine quills, it can be gold, or it can be paper. It can be a bunch of ones and zeros on a computer screen. Anything can be money. Even carbon credits can be money. So money is not a real thing. It's just something that you must believe in down below. Now, a long time ago in South Africa, the exact same thing happened. The British came over and they went and started speaking to the different black tribes. And they said, oh, do you know that the tribe across the way there, they're going to come and attack you. However, the British army can defend you. And they would put their British army out and they would shoot the other tribe when they came to attack. Then they would go to the chief of the village and say, Oh, you owe the queen one shilling. Now, 
where are you supposed to get this one shilling from? Because obviously you, you haven't earned the shilling. You don't have this, this thing called a shilling. So you can't pay a shilling. But because you don't have a shilling, instead get all of your villagers to come and work on that piece of land that you gave us. To clear away the trees, to help build a barracks for us, to build a church for us, uh, to plant crops for us, to look after the livestock. And we will pay them all a little bit of money. And then you will tax from each of them a little bit of money. And that's how you'll get your shilling. So at the top, as I keep saying, money is slavery. And that's why you notice that the richest people in the world always give away their money. They don't want to have any money. They give it away to foundations. Foundations and charities. The job of the foundations and charities are to go into new territories to establish themselves there to set up the exact same system that I was just explaining to you about with the British and uh, using their military against the old tribes of uh, Africa. So this is an ancient system that's been used time and time again where you work for a thing called money and that means that I can have you as my slave because I'm the person who creates money and I'm the person who can change money. I can say that money is a piece of paper with Jan van Riebeck's face in it. Then I can come up and say no 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 that's not money anymore. Money is a piece of paper with an animal on it. Then I can say, no, 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 that 200 Rand note, that's an old 200 Rand note. That's not money anymore. This is a new 200 Rand note. As long as you have to pay me for my services that I'm providing in terms of the city's services or the country's services, you're going to have to work for this thing called money. So therefore, I'm always going to have a slave and I'm always going to be able to tax that slave and keep you right down in the bottom levels of believing that somehow if you have more money, you're going to be free. So the next time you hear somebody saying, oh, I wish I had more money, understand that they're not actually asking for more money. They're asking to be a slave because that's what money is at the end of the day.